have you noticed that there's a new Cricut update? Yes, they changed the way a few things look. Over here, you used to be able to toggle between home and canvas, and now they have two separate tabs. That's kind of nice because instead of pulling down to try to flip back and forth, you can just click on those tabs. You will notice that the three lines over here that we used to go to for settings is gone. Well, it's not really gone. They moved it. So now go over here to your name and pull down. And there it is, settings. So things that you might have been looking for over here, like your subscription, being able to switch between beta and live, calibrating your machine, changing so that you have a grid or no grid. Those are some of the most common ones that people used to go to settings for. So they're all here now. If you go here, you can also see this is what version of Design Space I'm on. And you can click on what's new. It's going to tell you some of the things they've updated. If you need the help, you can go here. I didn't see the feedback button. Oh, right here. Report issue. So instead of feedback, it's now report issue. This three pull downs, new window, reload, and help. Here's another contact member care. Um, those used to be over here. I know a lot of people are going to say they changed it again and how design space works. They didn't really. They just moved a few of the buttons. So this is why I say to people, it's so important to learn what all the buttons do in Cricut Design Space. Because those things haven't changed. From the first day Design Space was launched, there are some things that have absolutely never changed. Slice has always been used to cut something. And what I mean by that is If I select these two things and slice, I can cut one out of the other. So slice has never changed. You've always only been able to select two things for slice to work. That's never changed. Using weld to join together things that are touching or overlapping, that has never changed. using group to hold things together so that you can resize them together or duplicate them together. That has never changed. Using attach to hold placement and position of things. That has never changed. Right now, what I just did was set that drawn word boo to be attached to that circle. So now when I click make it, it's going to draw with the pen the word boo and then cut the circle. That's never changed. To get lettering like this, you've always had to use a writing style font. If you use a regular style font and just change the operation to pen, you are always going to get hollowed out letters. That's never changed. Do you want to know the reason why? If you change a cutting font to pen, the reason it becomes hollowed out is because your Cricut blade and your Cricut pen are both going to follow the same path. So if it was cutting it, it's going to follow that outside path to cut the letter T. So when you change it to pen, the Cricut doesn't know you want to change that to just a single straight line. 
that you write with your pen. It thinks you just want the same font, but you want a pen to follow the outline. Now, if you want this font filled in, you're going to need to go over to my website, shotmosh.com, and you are going to search the term hatch fill. I have a whole tutorial on how to fill in those bubbled letters. If I select both of these items and click flatten, that will turn those cut images into a print then cut image. That's never changed. Flatten has always turned all cut designs into print then cut designs. And speaking of print then cut, you always, always need a solid shape behind your design because it's going to print your image and then cut that shape. So there's actually two ways I could do this with this exact same image. So I'm going to make a copy and put that over here. I could either put a shape like a circle out here and then change that to white because remember your printer can't print white then put my palm tree over the top, select both, and hit flatten. And now it's going to print the palm tree, but cut that circle. So what if I just wanted it to cut around the palm tree shape? I could add a small offset. And I can slide this to make it bigger or smaller. I'm going to just type in 0.5 because I really don't want much of an offset. So I'm trying to make it really tight. And then click apply. So if I turn off my palm tree and look at just the offset, I can see it's now a solid shape. There's no openings inside here. So if I change this to white, turn my palm tree back on, select all and hit flatten. Now it's going to print the palm tree, but cut just a slightly larger white offset. If you do not put a solid shape behind your design, if I just flatten this, it's going to cut each of these pieces separately. So those brown pieces and those leaves are each going to be separate. Contour has always been used to turn on and off elements of your cut designs. So for this one, if I wanted that middle to be solid, I could do that. This is why I stress that people learn to understand what the different things in design space can do. I just showed you multiple things that have never changed in all the years that design space has been around. So understand the functions. And if you don't, head over to my website, seanmosh.com. Another thing that has never changed, Cricut Design Space has always been free to use. Yes, there are some functions that you have to subscribe to access to be able to use, but I've found ways around that. So like I said, head over to my website, seanmosh.com. You can click on classes and I have a link to some free resources to help get you started. But if you feel like you want to learn everything I know about Cricut Design Space, which is a lot because I've owned a Cricut since 2008, I would highly recommend you purchase the Teach Me Cricut Design Space online course. If you want some really personal one-on-one -on -one time with me, you can book a personal session and we will go over all the functions in Cricut Design Space. Or if you just need a little extra help, use the project specific class. It's kind of like having a Cricut phone a friend. You get to use me for an hour and tap my brain and get my ideas, experience, and help. Otherwise, whatever you're looking for, type it into the search bar. If you want 
to learn how to create layers in Design Space with images you upload, I can show you how to do that. If you want to learn how to fill in a font that's bubbled, like we talked about in this video, I can show you how to do that. If you want to learn where you can find free Cricut fonts, I have an article all about that. If you want a list of places where you can go to get free SVG files, or you just want to learn what is an SVG file and how do I use it, you have to check out my ultimate SVG guide. If you want to learn how to make your own SVG files, you can't do that in Cricut Design Space, but I have two different articles that will tell you some software programs or apps that you can use to do that. If you want to make sure you're always getting the best price when you're shopping for vinyl, make sure to check out my vinyl buyer's guide. If you're ever running into problems with your Cricut projects, you should check out my troubleshooting pages. I have one for errors that comes up, one specific to print and cut. I have some common mistakes that people make and how to fix them. And whenever there's a new glitch or problem that people are running into, I add that to my list of troubleshooting guides and fixes for known issues. If you want to learn how to make stickers, this video is from 2020, but people tell me it still gets them what they need to understand how to make stickers. If you are uploading your own images and you feel like they're always only able to save as print and cut, but you want to cut them with your Cricut as a layered design, check out this article. This will explain the difference to you. If you're looking for some easy Cricut projects, I have those too. If you want to learn how to upload images that already have more than one color in them, I have an article for that. If you're trying to decide if you really need Cricut access, make sure to read this article. Spoiler alert, I don't pay for Cricut access. I use Cricut Design Space for free. If you want to learn from a bunch of Cricut experts, check out this article. This is where I'm going to update people about the online summits and events that I'm participating in. And as you scroll through my homepage, you'll see my Cricut resources and my SVG articles right up here in front. If you want a free SVG file, I'm going to be making more and adding them to my website. If you want to make sure you continue to get the best Cricut crafting tips mailed right to your inbox, make sure to sign up for my newsletter. If you have any questions about using Cricut Design Space, please reach out to me. I say this a lot, but I really truly mean it. About 85 to 90% of the questions I see people posting on social media about what am I doing wrong, I can answer them. And the answer is probably either in my course or on my website. So send me an email if you have a question. Before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment below. I love to hear from you.